as Professor Ren said, my name is Liana Vieira um, and my major is actuarial science. Um, and just before I begin, I want to give a big shout out to my sponsor, Professor Basares, because she was just the absolute best sponsor I could have asked for in helping me complete this project. Um, so my project is evaluating the risk to education that low income students face a case study of Denver public schools. Um, so first, I just want to say why um, Denver public schools. Um, first of all, I had access to the data, um, which was super helpful. And then it's also my um, home district. I grew up in Denver Public Schools through my education. Um, and then I also have a family connection. Um, my mom is actually a teacher in Denver Public Schools and she um, helped me come up with my initial idea for my project. And then um, also focusing on just the one district, it helped me with the scale of the project and I was able to get more um, precise results. Um, so first, my research question and methods. Um, so this project is about um, investigating the probability that students who are born into low income households inherently face of receiving a lower standard of education and the risk that that poses to their cognitive development and their future educational opportunities. Um, and so again, I was able to use the school performance framework data from Denver Public Schools and then I used um, Stata software to run my linear regression. Um, so just, oops, skip that part. Um, so just before I get into um, the part that I did on my project, I wanna share a little bit of my preliminary research. Um, so first I was looking into how schools are evaluated um, because that kind of helps understand my results and um, where they're actually coming from. Um, so administrators are the ones who publish the most official school evaluations and those are gonna be mostly based on test scores. Um, but teachers and parents' opinions are also important. Um, and parents generally might look at things that um, administrators skip over or ignore. And um, teachers, um, generally their confidence in themselves to teach actually has an effect on their students' performance. Um, and so then I wanted to look into the inequalities um, that students may face since my project is focusing mo mostly on economic inequalities. But I found that um, in many ways, these different inequalities are often tied together. Um, so first students are facing racial inequalities. Um, I found that um, black students are still sig um, score significantly uh, lower on tests than white students. And um, there are academic achievement gaps between white students and students of color that begin earlier and on in education and they actually grow as students um, move up through their education. Um, and minority students also face disadvantages when it comes to um, access to school equipment, such as computers, um, which again ties into the economic inequalities because they um, often are lower income as well. Um, and some of the social inequalities that students may face um, include the school climate, which um, is kind of how the school um, treats students and their teacher-student ratio. Um, because that can have a significant effect on their academic performance, as well as their relationships with their teachers, um, which again is related to the racial inequalities because um, often teachers may have inherent biases against certain students. And then finally, economic inequalities. Um, so, that, so students who come from lower income households um, tend to have, there's, um, Sorry, their wealth has a significant impact on the teacher-student ratio, which affects how students um, learn. And family income also has a strong impact on academic achievement. Um, and family income actually, I found to have the greatest effect um, early in early childhood, um, which kind of leads me to my next couple of points about um, 
how to overcome these inequalities. Um, and I found that the biggest factor was preschool. Um, I found a lot of research about um, that the earlier students get help, um, the more beneficial um, it is and the, the more they see the results later in life as well. Um, and that actually changed a little bit my initial thoughts and it actually caused me to add a little bit on to um, my project, which I'll talk about as I get further into it. Um, so a little bit about my data and where it comes from. So again, my primary source was the Denver Public School School Performance Framework. Um, then I also used the Denver government um, website to obtain uh, median income for each of the neighborhoods as well as the population. And then I also used the Urban Institute um, data edu Education Data Explorer um, for enrollment, percent free or reduced, uh, of students who qualify for free or reduced lunch, and um, this elementary variable that I will talk about as we get more into it. So first, just a little bit about DPS. Um, this that you see on the screen is just a spread of the DPS um, of the uh, median incomes in DPS neighborhoods. Um, so you can see that the most common um, is this 50 to 59,000 um, slice there. And um, just a little bit about DPS, as of October 2019, they had 93,815 students and 63.4% of students qualified for um, free or reduced lunch. Um, so my first steps and a little bit more about my data. Um, so the first thing I did was get my summary statistics here, which you can see. Um, so first the SPF percentage points, that's the school performance framework. And that is a percentage of how well the school performed. Um, the important ones here, um, percent student color, that's again the percent of students of color in each school. Um, the percent um, for reduced lunch is the percent of students who qualify for free or reduced lunch in each school. And then so elementary and ECE program, those are both dichotomous variables. So they're either a zero or a one. Um, so a one means that it is an elementary school, a zero means that it's not, and same for ECE. Um, we go next. Um, so then before I ran my regression, I did a pairwise correlation matrix. Um, and the main point of this was just to see if any of my variables were too highly correlated because that could cause a problem with my regression analysis. Um, and so the main one that I was interested in was um, the percent free or reduced lunch and the median income because I thought that those might have um, a high correlation, um, but it actually wasn't um, too high for, for my project. So it ended up being okay. And something interesting that I found here was, um, so I included the percent students of color in the pay rise matrix, but um, I wasn't including it in my um, regression model. I just wanted to see how it correlated with some of my other variables. And I found almost perfect correlation um, with the percent of students who qualify for free or reduced lunch. So that kind of brings me back to the overlapping of um, inequalities. So the higher percent of students who qualify for free or reduced lunch who are low income, there's also a higher percentage of students of color as well. Um, so a bit about the model and results. So this was my, um, uh, estimated equation that I came up with. Um, but I found that um, the only variable that had a significant impact on the predicted SPF score was um, the free or reduced lunch, which is this one here, um, which also had an effect on my initial thoughts because I thought that I was going to use median income as my main um, determining variable of income status. But um, it also makes sense because the percent free or reduced lunch is gonna give a better idea of um, the actual school how the, um, and their percent of low-income students, whereas the neighborhood the school is in, students might commute in to go to that school or um, out to go to a different school. Um, so I, and I did just to see what would happen, I ran my model without the free or reduced lunch variable to see if median income would have an impact, um, but 
um, I actually found that it didn't. Um, and so then, like I mentioned before, with the preschool um, having such a significant impact on students' um, education, I decided to run my model just to, with just ECE to see if it had an effect. So what I did is I used my elementary um, variable to drop any school that was not an elementary school because ACE won't have an effect on middle or high schools. And um, so then I reran my model, but um, by dropping all of those schools, I significantly reduced my sample size and the schools um, that were elementary schools still included the neighborhoods with the lowest and the highest incomes. So I still had the entire spread of income, but a much lower, um, but a much lower sample size. And so that caused my model to not work as planned. Um, so just some final conclusions. Um, so again, the presence of students qualifying for free or reduced lunch who um, typically come from economically disadvantaged um, groups is directly linked to lower um, school performance scores. And so therefore those students are missing out on educational opportunities. Um, so it was really interesting to get these very specific results um, for Denver. And you know, there are, these are things that I was reading about and hearing about and then I was able to prove them. Um, and so then this information is also helpful for parents to understand what type of school um, their kid is actually attending. Um, and then to explore further, it would be really interesting to expand to other Colorado districts, especially because then to add more schools, it would be interesting to actually find a better um, estimate of the effect of ECE programs. And then also, I can only state what my research shows, which is that um, the higher presence of low income students at a school, then they're gonna have a lower um, school performance. Um, but this is the school performance framework, which is um, directly published by administrators. Um, so it is highly based on test scores, um, which they have been brought into question recently about if um, test scores actually measure students' performance in school and the quality of the school. Um, so that would be something interesting to look into in terms of next steps. And that is everything.